Hello and welcome to our daily devotion for August 7th, 2020. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are looking at the Sermon on the Mount. Covening is the topic for today. Reading Matthew 5, 27 to 30. Jesus says, You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. Those are some pretty tough and harsh words from our dear Lord and Savior Jesus, speaking in hyperbole. Uh, the Bible does not want us, does never directs us to hurt ourselves or to harm ourselves or to mutilate ourselves. But he's saying deny it. Cut it off in that sense, to deny these things that cause you to sin. Well, we kind of have to deny ourselves, don't we? If we want to stop sinning, we have to deny ourselves. And of course, we never stop sinning. We never completely get to that point where we can be sinless. Fortunately, and overwhelmingly phenomenal, is the fact that God declares us sinless when we look to him in faith. The shed blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. So God looks at us as if we haven't sinned. And that's beautiful. And that also motivates us to live in a way that gives God glory and is helpful to our fellow man. Our, our neighbor, whoever's around us, wherever we are. Looking at what Luther says on Matthew 5, 27 to 30, Do what one of the ancient fathers counseled long ago. I cannot, he said, keep a bird from flying over my head, but I can certainly keep it from nesting in my hair or from biting my nose off. So it is not in our power to prevent this or some other temptation and to keep the thoughts from occurring to us. Just be sure that you let it go at that, and do not let them in, even though they knock on the door. Keep them from taking root, for they may make you sin voluntarily and purposely. It is still sin nonetheless, but it is included in our common forgiveness, for we cannot live in the flesh without a great many sins, and everyone must have his devil. Thus St. Paul complains in Romans 7, 17, and 18 about the sin that dwells in him, and says he knows that nothing good dwells in his flesh. Good words of advice from Luther. Temptations come. Temptations come. But try to stop them. Learn to recognize them and try to stop them. Don't dwell on them. In talking about the commandments, Luther, Luther often used the phrase, whatever you fear, love, and trust, right? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. And when we fear, love, and trust in God, when we pray to him, then we develop the, the habit that when temptations come along, we, we turn to God and set our sights on him. We pray to him, say, God, help me resist this temptation. We daily sin much. There's no question about that. But as I've often said, it's not necessarily <clears throat> what happens or what we do, but what we do afterwards. So if a temptation comes to you, resist it. Resist it. And then afterwards, ask God for forgiveness for whatever thought has been wrong or action or deed or word. Temptations do come. Ask God for help. Ask God to lead you and guide you in a way that minimizes those temptations. I heard a pastor say many years ago, if someone is tempted by alcohol, they really shouldn't walk by the bar on their way home every night. They should find a different way to go home. And that's just good common sense advice. If certain things tempt you, avoid them. Make a conscious and deliberate effort to avoid them. The real problem with sin is that it separates us from God. It separates us from others. It hurts us and it hurts others. We want to avoid that as much as possible. Obviously, we don't avoid it 100%. We are still beset by sin. We are still sinful. We sin daily and much. But we want to try to minimize that. And one way to do that is to set your sights on God, ask him for help, and work at minimizing those temptations in your life, avoiding them as much as possible. But we know we have a 
sure and certain hope, our dear rescuer Jesus, who came here and went to a cross to bleed and die so that our sins would be forgiven, sins of thought, sins of word, and sins of deed. Rest your hope in him. Look to him for help. Always, day in and day out, look to him to help you deal with your temptation. Look to him to help you as he forgives you willingly and lovingly. Amen. We are looking at the hymn, Be Still My Soul. Be still my soul, the Lord is on your side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave to your God to order and provide. In every change he faithful will remain. Be still my soul, your best, your heavenly friend, through thorny ways leads to a joyful end. Be still my soul, your God will undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Your hope, your confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be bright at last. Be still my soul, the waves and winds still know his voice who ruled them while he dwelt below. Be still my soul, though dearest friends depart and all is darkened in this veil of tears. Then you will better know his love, his heart, who comes to soothe your sorrows and your fears. Be still my soul, your Jesus can repay from his own fullness all he takes away. Be still my soul, the hour is hastening on, when we shall be forever with the Lord. When disappointment, grief, and fear are gone, sorrow forgot, love's purest joys restored. Be still, my soul, when change and tears are past, all safe and blessed we shall meet at last. We pray. Dear God, you are love, and Jesus proved it. It was your love for us fallen sinners that sent your Son to us with a message of forgiveness and even sacrificed him on the cross for our sins. Oh, how quickly and surely the problem of man's salvation was solved when you applied your love to it. How quickly the problem of human relationships and of human want and suffering could be solved if only all would learn to love one another. Love is infectious, Lord, and none more so than yours. We ask, therefore, that you entwine our hearts in your saving love, causing it to take over completely in our lives. By your love, which is ours by faith, strike off the shackles of sin that bind us to Satan, lest we be tempted to imitate his contemptible deeds, and displace the force of sin in our flesh that all too often makes us unloving and forgiving. Lord, we are not asking for some single great work to do, but only that you would teach us to love one another, thereby imitating your great love for us. Teach us to speak kindly to those who are harsh with us, Teach us to put away thoughts of revenge. Keep us from being blind to our brother's needs and from refusing to help him carry his burdens. Cause us to weep with those who weep and to speak comforting and encouraging words to those who need them. Make us ready and willing to visit the lonely, the sick, and the dying. Have us carry to our homes, to our churches, to our schools, and to our jobs the warmth of your saving love. Let us show to those closest to us that our lives have become new because our hearts are resting on your promises. With our eyes set on the goal that is in heaven, help us live and work together in love and harmony as your ransomed people. Without love, our works are nothing but a hollow shell. Therefore, as you fill our lives with good works, adorn them with love, a love that comes from knowing you in truth as the God of love who sacrificed your Son for us. In mercy, hear our confession. We often sin. We fail to imitate your love in doing only good things to others. But this is our confidence, that we can find shelter in your love and pardon through Christ, whom your love gave to us. Yes, give us your pardon and give us also the Holy Spirit in rich measure, that he may produce an ever greater and more constant love in us. For Jesus' sake we ask it. Amen. As God's forgiven children, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.